to at the Disney movies with the hearts. Recap episode. Yay! I'm Kelly. I'm David. And so just every couple, well, I was about to say every couple weeks, but that's not true. It's every 10 episodes we like to take a look back. This is 10 through, or this is 20 through 30. Yeah. And just kind of look at, you know, where, not only where the, where these movies are ranking in. So we like, so every 10 episodes we like to take a look at just, just kind of discuss some things, but also just take a look at where our scores are ranking and how they change over time. Cause definitely it's obviously the first 10 episodes are everything was in the top 10. And now that we've done 30 episodes, it's changing a little bit. Right. And sometimes you're in the moment rating may not exactly jive with how you felt about the movie and you might need to make a couple adjustments up or down. Yeah. And um, oftentimes we'll reference older movies that we watched before. Um, so definitely it's always a good idea to listen to all the episodes because then you can kind of get all the references that we make <laughs> yeah, to things. Yeah. But I mean, most importantly, Bullock Griffin, but... It, it is true. And if you have not watched... Or you know, Herbie Goes Bananas. Yeah. Both of those two are pretty important, I think. Yeah, so if, if you are newer to listening to our podcast, you really do need to watch Adventures of Bullock Griffin because we do reference that quite a bit. And that's one of those movies that we just... We were really, really hard on it when we watched it, but looking back on it, we both love it a yeah, lot. So. Yeah. And same with same with Herbie Goes Bananas. I mean, we were properly hard on it because it's a terrible movie. And that was like our third episode or something. It's three and four, actually. But Herbie Goes Bananas is so funny. It's hilarious. It really is. <laughs> the, like, the, I want to watch it again, little, kind of. But Yeah, definitely. Do you want to read your top ten where they're sitting right now? Okay, so my top ten are Toy Story... Heavyweights, Cinderella, Swiss Family Robinson, Beauty and the Beast, Princess Diaries, The Incredibles, Coco, The Lone Ranger, and Sleeping Beauty. Is there anything that you would change from that list? Mm, yeah, I I mentioned this the last time. Coco would drop, Bullwhip would go up. Um, otherwise... Wait, you would put Bullwhip in your top ten out of the oh, movies we watched? Totally. From all the way down there. <laughs> Coco, it's not, well, that's not actually that far. It's only a five degree difference from Coco it to Bullwhip. That's true, I guess. And I don't, I mean, Coco belongs way further down. And Bullwhip, yeah, it belongs in my top ten. Wow, I mean, I like it. Not top it, ten it, like it. It belongs at number seven where Coco is. Interesting. Okay. Um, so my top ten, Toy Story has been dethroned from the number one spot. It, my top ten are Beauty and the Beast, Toy Story, Sleeping Beauty, Emperor's New Groove, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Princess Diaries, Frank and Weenie, Night Crossing, Coco, and The Lone Ranger. I have to imagine you'd want to make some changes to that. <laughs> you have to imagine. I mean, I think I would take Coco and Frank and Weenie out. Yeah, Frank and Weenie's almost embarrassing. Uh, okay, but <laughs> that was a, that was like only like our fourth episode or something. It was our worst episode too. So well, that's fair. I, I mean, I, uh, but it was early. Those were early times in the podcast. I believe it was number five, but it was the worst one we did. It really was. I, I mean, I don't mm. worst episode. I think it was like twenty minutes long. Yeah, well, we didn't really have a lot to talk about, and we we're still early, so we hadn't really found our footing yet. Yeah, and... but it, and it was just it was ugly. And I think I would replace those with probably Swiss Family Robinson and actually Oliver and Company. I'm surprised it's not the Great Mouse Detective. <sighs> okay, so actually one of my biggest um, surprises, I guess I would say, is probably that, I mean, I do, I gave it such a high rating for Nostalgia but it's because I was really disappointed because I do acknowledge it's not that good of a movie. And I think that I just, I was so disappointed because I just had such fond memories for that movie. Yeah, that's fair. So let's hit our bottom three. I don't think there's, oh, no, there is a, oh, my God. What? So mine is Planes, Santa Claus 3, and Return to Neverland. That's worse to, like... Yeah, Planes is your bottom bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yours is Shaggy Dog Planes Santa Claus 3. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I just... Like, I just don't know how you couldn't put Shaggy Dog back down there. Like, I don't know it's how... It's so bad. I don't know how Return to Neverland... I, is not in my bottom three? God, it's so much worse than I Shaggy mean, it's, Dog. I mean, it's my number four. Oh, I know, but... And no, I disagree. And to clarify, this is the new Shaggy Dog with Tim Allen, because there is another Shaggy yeah, Dog we have yeah. yet to watch. But, but um, really, I think that Return to Neverland is worse than Santa Claus 3. But do you, you think know, it's worse than Planes? No. Planes, there's nothing worse than Planes. <laughs> but, <laughs> the interesting thing is, is in this last ten movies, there's nothing in our bottom even five from the last 10 movies we watched. Yeah, I mean, for me, the closest is, I think, Candle Shoe, which actually I would put above Nikki and Winnie the Pooh. So, so Candle Shoe I would definitely put above Winnie the Pooh, but that was in our last 20. Yeah. And Candle Shoe was easily the worst of the last movies we've seen, even though it was super enjoyable. Yeah. It was a bad movie. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Huge gaping holes in it. So. so you would think that Candle Shoe was worse than Nikki? Mm, no, no. It's just worse than Winnie the Pooh, or better than Winnie the Pooh and Frank and Weenie. Yeah, but Even of the of the last ten less. movies that we watched, Candle Shoe was easily the worst. Worse than Nikki. Nikki's not in the last. Yeah, no, one, Nikki is it? was twenty one. <sighs> so yeah, I thought Nikki was better than Candle Shoe. Yeah, no, because. Um, and it was. Uh, I don't know, man. I think Candle Shoe was better than Nikki. Kick fighting? Really? That Candle Shoe was better than that? Kick fighting. And Nikki. I, I mean, it was a, pretty a good. A dog and a bear. It, I mean, it was pretty good. But they're, they're pretty close. It's neck and neck for that bad movie. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Nostalgia. But um, what, did you have any surprises of this this area, this part of our... Well, even though we just talked about how bad of a movie it was, but how big of a beast Jodie Foster is as an actress and a person in that movie. Yeah? I mean, she was pretty... She's pretty crazy. Yeah, she is. Um, otherwise... You know, Million Dollar Arm was... And The Incredibles both... Oh, no, 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 no. The biggest surprise is Heavyweights. How I didn't know about this movie... <laughs> And it ended up being one of my favorites. It's yeah, crazy. you loved it. You really it's loved crazy it. Crazy that I didn't know this movie existed. I mean, I think it's even. Yeah, it's in your top ten, isn't it? It's my number two. Yeah, <sighs> which is crazy because Rotten Tomatoes, it's like in the bottom five. So that's also one of my biggest surprises. What the <laughs> is wrong with everybody? That is just ludicrous. But I will say my other biggest surprise would have been Million Dollar Arm because. That was a surprisingly good movie, for, especially for how goddamn long it was. Yeah, because we both were really not looking forward to watching it, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. We were kind of like, oh, a baseball movie, cool. Uh, yeah. Like, we, I don't think either one of us are really into baseball movies or baseball in general. Uh, the only thing I like about baseball is listening to Apple Sox games when we're camping. Yeah. And going to Mariners games. Wait, going to a game in person is super fun. That's totally different. No, I'm going to say specifically Mariners games when the night is right. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. But, yeah, I would agree with that. It, it was a pretty good movie. Um, and I will say that I'm just really surprised that with just the Rotten Tomatoes that it's so far down there. And then in terms of our average rating, we were a little bit farther apart before, but now um, we're pretty close. Like, my average rating is 57 out of all the movies we've watched. Right, mine's 55. I think you've drank a lot more haterade as we've gone by, and I've gotten a little more amenable to these movies. Maybe you're just drinking more wine, and so you're more happy. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that makes me more critical. And then Rotten Tomatoes' average score is 65 out of all the movies we've watched. So they're still more positive than we are. Which yeah. I feel like <clears throat> almost every time I'm surprised at how different. Yeah, like how much like <clears throat> lower they give a rating of a movie. Yeah, so uh, it surprises me that they're higher. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, they they did give, um, yeah, Heavyweight's 29%, which and it's in your top two. So there's yeah, that. <clears throat> yeah, there is that. The Lone Ranger is also pretty low on theirs. Yeah, and I mean, same with Inspector Gadget. We both liked Inspector Gadget. 
Yes, we did. That is true. And Princess Diaries, too. That one, they, lo- they rated oh, really low, too. Remember? Yeah. I mean, from the last And that's in my ones, top ten. So. Yeah. It's in both of our top ten. Yeah. So, a little weird. A little weird. It is. So, what are our biggest differences? At this point, I mean, really, our top tens, The Emperor's New Groove, you've got way up there, and it doesn't even fall in my top ten. Yep. And same with Ralph Bricks the Internet. And you don't have Cinderella in your top ten, which to me blows my mind. To me, Cinderella is it's... so much better than so many of these movies. It, it just it blows me away. I mean, I would probably move it up like two spots, maybe. Th- well, I guess if Still I not get even like, into the top ten, I don't think so. No, I think it would just be edged out of the top ten, especially if I moved up. What did I say? If I moved up Swiss Family and Oliver, I think it would be like at number eleven. That's just crazy to me. I just, just look, I just love all those movies. I mean, I, I, I think maybe I might give Ralph a little bit of a lower score looking at it. Like, maybe I would move it down to, like, 80%. Like, it would be edged out a little bit more, but I still really liked it. <clears throat> but, yeah, no, it is, it is, and I was surprised by that, because I thought that that was, but I mean, that's just how it played out, I guess. So what's our biggest, what's your biggest surprise? I think you kind of touched on it, it a little did. bit already. Um, let's see, uh, I mean, another big surprise is just how much I still love Beauty and the Beast. And just that I, I think I like it more as an adult than I did as a child. It was never, like, my go-to, like, I loved it, but it wasn't, like, my favorite, and I really liked it. I mean, still, mine is still the Million Dollar Arm, I, for 20 through 38, it's just shocking how good it was. Yeah, no, it was, it was very good. Yeah. And I, cause I, just because I don't want to keep saying heavyweights for every answer. <laughs> yeah, but what is your biggest opinion change since we recorded it? Hmm. <laughs> is this for 20 through 30? I mean, sure, it can be for anything. I mean, because I don't want to keep saying bull with birth. Well, yeah, no, but so primarily through 20 through 30. You know, I really think that over time... I would boost the Candle Shoe movie up more and probably knock the Great Mouse Detective. I would actually probably swap places with the 51 and 38 with those two. Whew. I really, really did not enjoy the Great Mouse I Detective. I know. I know you didn't. Like, it's, it you're, just... like, pouring salt into my open childhood wounds uh, right now. I'm not trying to. It's just the honest, my honest opinion. I know. And Candle Shoe, even with its... Just gaping plot holes was so much fun to watch. Well, and that's the thing is that, like, we knock all these old school Disney movies, but, like, they're fun to watch. Like, right. they, I mean, Candle, there's just something charming about them. Candle Shoe is right there with Herbie Goes Bananas with its wackadoodle, nonsense, terrible movie. But would I watch Candle Shoe again? A hundred percent I would watch it again. Yeah. Would I ever watch Great Mouse Detective again? Not in my, not, not, not a f***ing ah. chance. Well, I mean, you're probably going to watch it at some point. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe with my progeny, but they'll probably hate it because it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. My biggest opinion change, probably heavyweights, I guess. Yeah, because Cause... I think in the time you... Your whole review was positive, and then you just trashed it with the rating. No, I just was trying to be, like, firm, I guess. Like, okay, but I got it. that was too firm. It, it, it was. It was It was a little For bit. such a jiggly, fat movie. That was too <laughs> firm. Yeah, no, I gave it a 59 originally. I think I would probably bump it up to, like, uh, probably, like, a 72. Probably See, right, right in, like, million-dollar arm range. That seems more fair. Um, because I do really enjoy it and like looking back on it now and thinking about the character, like mainly Ben Stiller's character, like it was really funny. Fair enough. Like I, I enjoyed it a lot. So what's your best scene for 20 through 30? It's going to sound kind of weird, but I mean, it's, it's actually, I think a two, well, I have a, I have two. Um, I just, I don't know why, but it's that small scene in Sleeping Beauty when she's going up the stairs and, like, Maleficent is getting her to prick her finger. I just really liked that scene. Like, I just was really into it. Like, the animation, the music, like, I don't know why. I just thought it was so, amazing. So, I'll play off of that with me and Cinderella's dress-tearing scene. 
Oh my god. I think it's amazing. <laughs> it's so random. It is, but it's not. And then and it's amazing. It, I mean, it is good because it's a very it's it's a very effective scene. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and then just because it's so much fun, my second would be probably the um, the Gaston song in Beauty and the Beast, the whole tavern scene, and that with LeFou and Gaston. I, it's just a fun scene, and like it's it, the song is catchy, and um, yeah. I'm gonna go for the food party in Heavyweight. Oh, that's a good one too. I for, I completely just forgot incredible. about that. It's it is just incredible. I completely forgot about that. That and, is. And my third runner up is gonna be the tomato fight in Candle Shoe. Oh my god, that's a good one too. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, no, that that one is really really good. Yeah. I yeah. Those two those two <laughs> just fighting is funny as hell. It is that that is that's pretty good. Yeah. No, I I think I. Yeah, no, I think the tomato fight, actually, that one is really funny. It really it's is. It's good. It's good stuff. So what would you say about uh, the best, who do you think the best villain is of these ones that we've watched recently? Okay, it's a tough tie between yeah. Gaston and Ben Stiller. Like, yeah. Gaston is, a, is probably just inches out Ben Stiller because he's a great villain. Yeah, th- there this, is no so, thing, nothing redeeming. All of these movies that no, we watch. I'll, I'll just call him the best one because he's got the song. He's just hateable. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Got to be Gaston. So all of the, I mean, for the most part, like I'd say eight out of the 10 movies that we watched in the last 10 had excellent villains. Yeah, that's true. Where we were like, having a hard time for the first 20. The yeah. last ten really like had even like villains. the dude and Nikki like he was like de- de- deplorable. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I have to say, actually, my favorite villain, just because it's kind of classic, is Maleficent. Like I just think she's so evil, and she's just. But also Gaston is good, and then I did also write down to Tony Perkis. He's like a lovable villain. Yeah, Tony Perkis is hilarious. I mean, he's great. I I will say that he's awesome. I think for the right kind of people, yeah, Maleficent's fine. I guess I just I just wasn't impressed by Sleeping Beauty as much as other people. That's fine. No, it's yeah, it's, it's not. Fine. Generally, the general consensus is that Cinderella is more popular than Sleeping Beauty. Like yeah. that's that's the general consensus. I'm the weird one in this situation. Maybe maybe dudes like it more. I don't know. Maybe that's what makes. They're it more just popular. into the dress ripping. It's fine. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. What about your most compelling scene? Most compelling. So the one that really. Gives you that emotional, oh, oh, no, my gosh. I mean, this is going to sound weird, but the end fight in Nikki... Yeah, it's really upsetting. ...is upsetting and crazy and so unexpected. Yeah. You have to give it some credence at some point. No, that's that's a good one, because I mean, it's definitely, like, it's dog fighting, so it's very uncomfortable. And then people in dog fighting and, and people in people fight, like... And the whole that's, movie was a nature documentary. So that scene is awful in yeah. a nature documentary. Like, it's just like this. It, it is a compelling, like, car crash. Like, oh, my God, what the ah! f*** have I just been watching? Yeah, it's, it, it definitely, like, hits you over the head with a two-boy four kind of scene, for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, so that's definitely going to be mine. Um, so I went kind of a different direction That's a little fine. bit, but, <laughs> but still actually, and maybe not that so different. It's a terrible scene because it makes you really uncomfortable is in million dollar arm in the scene where they're doing the tryouts in front of all of the the, the oh, team managers. Yeah, that's not that far and, off. Like, that is horrific. That made me feel sick. Oh, like I felt yeah. I felt nauseous watching that. I actually that. kind of didn't even think about that because I pretty much blocked it out. That but it was good. Yeah. Like, it, that's part of what made that movie good is, yeah, like, you actually really cared is. what happened. I mean, that made that movie excellent. And, oh, yeah, that's really bad. It was just the so whole, uncomfortable. The whole build-up to it, the scene itself, oh, man, that, that is It was just bad. heartbreaking. Like it that really is. is. It's just like, oh, John Hamm's such a douche. Oh, you know what? He should get a good runner-up for villain, too, because he is just terrible. The villain hero? The anti-hero? No, he's not a hero at all. He is just the villain. <laughs> Ugh. So, what is your bullwhip ep- Has your is, is there anything, maybe even not in the 20 to 30, other, but is there anything else that's your, your bull, bullwhip episode? And when we say bullwhip episode, we mean, like, one that you were really hard on. Or did we already talk about that? Yeah, we, we, talk, we talked about it in 20, 10 through 20, but... Not everybody might know, but yeah. still, I mean, I think it's pretty easy to say that Candle Shoe is the bullwhip of this one. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I would agree. Even though I rated it bad, it, it kind of is a bad movie. God, is it enjoyable. It is. It's it's almost the Herbie, but it's also kind of the bullwhip. Like, yeah, no, we, yeah. It, it's I would be watch it again. Show. I would definitely watch it again. It's got a lot of good scenes. It's just that whoever put the movie together was touched. Yeah. It, yeah, it's definitely Candle Shoe. What, uh, do you think anything in your top ten will make it to the end? I'm pretty sure that all the 90, or well, no, I only have 190. I have a feeling that, that Heavyweights and Cinderella will make it. I don't think I'm going to have that movie or many movies right in the 90s. It's hard to say, though, because we're only like... We're not even a tenth of the way no, through the No, we're movies. not. We're just, we got a ways to so, go. So, I mean, there could be tons of surprises. That's the thing. Yeah. But there's so many surprises with these movies that, at first, I was really confident, like, oh, yeah, the Lone Ranger's going to make it. I really like the Lone Ranger. It belongs way further up on my list. But I that was my answer last time. Yeah. I don't think it's going to make it. Yeah, even, I mean, in, even in my heart, like, I don't think it's going to make it. Yeah, I mean, even looking at my list, like, I don't think Emperor's New Groove is going to make it, and that's 89%. Like, I just have a feeling that, like, I just, I don't think it's going to make it. That's um, fair, that's fair, that's fair. Because I just, I think there are still a lot of really good movies. Like, I would like to see The Princess Diaries make it, but I know it won't. <laughs> you know well, what I, mean? I mean, you say that now, but like... <clears throat> well, at 78, it's not going to make No, it. no, but like, think about all the movies we haven't watched, and like, is there any movie, like, that you can think of that you are looking forward to watching? Like, that you, just looking through the list, that you're... Still no, because yeah. all of the best movies have been surprises. That's true. I mean, anything that like you're like you're intrigued to watch, like, oh, I can't, that sounds really interesting. No, because I don't know, I've purposely not looked. So, so... I mean, I don't know, I mean... At the same time, I would have never thought that Cinderella was going to be in my top three, yeah. and it is, and I will defend that still from what we've watched so far. Like, Cinderella is a f***ing great movie. Fair enough. to say. Yeah. You know? Do you think that they, we will come across anything worse than planes? I still don't think so. You don't no. think so? No, no, I really don't. It would be... It would planes have to be, 2. Is that one of our movies? It is. Oh, that okay. Then yeah, planes too. But how are you gonna do that? Like a like a negative. No, it percent? just it can't be as bad, but it can be just as bad. Fair enough. I mean, so do you think any of these movies could be remade? That's a good question. Actually, that's a really good question. I wish they would stop remaking animated movies. I agree with that. And there are some that we do have to watch. Although I will say that actually, so. The remaking of animated movies is not a super new thing. Do you remember when they remade 101 Dalmatians back in, like, the 90s? Yeah. People, and that was actually really good. People pretending that remakes are new is stupid. The problem is is that we've kind of stopped making original movies with the remakes. Yeah. It's fine to make remakes, but when there's no original movies to dilute the remakes, that's the problem. Um, You know... Of the last ten that we watched, it would be kind of interesting to see Heavyweights being remade, but I don't think it would be as good because it doesn't have that same 90s charm. But I would like to see it remade with chicks. Yeah, that would be... With chicks and dudes. Yeah. That would be good. Personally, this is going to sound weird, I would like them to remake Candle Shoe. Really? Yeah, without the plot holes. Yeah, to make it like just like a better movie. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could even put it in the same time. Yeah. And, I mean, the only problem is, is that you have to have somebody as strong as Jodie Foster. Yeah. Which is really hard to do. But, I mean, I would just like to see it without the plot holes. It would be cool. Yeah, I'll second that. I, I, will, I will second that and say that's a good choice, for yeah. sure. That's a good one. Because, I mean, really, that's what remake should be is remaking a bad movie into a better movie. Yeah, because the whole, <laughs> like, like, the whole okay. Like taking an Aladdin and making it live Yeah, action and is... it's so, and like when they redid Lion King, like, I just, it was literally just no. a shot for shot digital, it wasn't even live action. They didn't even use real animals. So, like, I it, mean, we'll get to the point where we talk about that, but. No, I know, that's but. That's going to be a rough conversation when we get to that one. But it's just like, 
it, it was, and I understand it's about money and it's whatever, but like some of them, cause like, if I remember right, I did actually like the live action Cinderella quite a bit. It was pretty good. Cause There's they, no live action yeah, Cinderella? it was pretty recent, but they changed some of the story and they made it, they made it like better and they had a pretty good cast. Um, and I think I, I really liked the 101 Dalmatians that was like the OG live action remake of animated. Fair enough. Fair cause enough. it's has, Glenn, Wait, is that the one with, that's uh... the one with Glenn Close. Uh, yeah, and yeah. it's and uh, Jack- I feel like I've seen that, but I can't yeah. really remember. So I just, yeah, I mean, I would say Candle Shop. Actually, you know, since you didn't ask that question last time, um, and they did actually re- kind of remake it, not in the U.S., but Night Crossing, because they made some German film company made like a new one that came out like this year, and oh, it, wow. which, and like they made it look super dark and intense. Like they made it more like, and it's called like the balloon or something. See, I don't know. I really like not only that movie, but like exactly where it's at, the way that it's shot. Yeah, it's like so good. A couple of years after it actually happened, like it to me, it just feels like that time. I I don't think I would like a remake of that, yeah, but. Maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't think so though. Um other than that, I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> they really need to, need to stop. I don't think I had any other questions that I, I could think more. of. Oh, you have one more? What's your who's your favorite actor performance or MVP of the top 40, 30? Of the all the movies that we've watched? Yeah, who's the who's the best? Who's who's the Jordan? Who's your So, okay. I might have a couple, but um, in terms of animated movies... doesn't matter. It's all No, I know. Movies. I'm going to have one for animated and one for live action. Okay. In animated, I would say Patrick Warburton as Kronk okay. in Emperor's New Groove okay. is incredible. Okay. Um, and then in terms of live action, I think it's a tie between Jodie Foster and Candleshoe or Julie Andrews and Princess Diaries as the grandma. Hmm. That's... I just love her character so much, and I think that she's she's incredible. Uh, oh, or maybe it might be Clor- uh, uh, what's Cloris, her? Leachman. Cloris Leachman from Her Biggest Bananas. That's pretty good too. Tough one. Um, yeah, no, the, I think that's that's my list. Yeah. What about you? So animated, I'm gonna go with the Last Girl. Yeah, Holly what's Hunter. Holly Hunter. Yeah, she's good too. I mean, she saves. What is a yeah mostly terrible movie? <laughs> it really helps. Yeah, and then live action. Oh god, damn it! I mean, I I just thought of another one. There are so many. There for are live so action. many for live action. I mean, I want to say Johnny Depp because without Johnny Depp, that movie is garbage, and it was one oh, of the and, best movies yeah, we watched in Lone Ranger. Yeah. I, <sighs> I mean, okay, there's an obvious one that. That we're both missing right now. Ben Stiller in Heavyweights. I mean, no, come on. no, because that movie had a lot of good things about okay, it. I didn't fine, want to fine, pick fine. him. All right. I, I, to me, it's gonna have to be. It's it has to be Johnny Depp. Still. In Lone Ranger, that that's yeah. a good answer for that one. Yeah. Because that movie would be garbage without him. Yeah, that's that is a really good answer. But actually, also, I will throw in there the guy who plays. The dad in Night Crossing. That he, guy was really he was, good. And I and I'm sorry. I got shamed dude. by my friend because she was like, he plays Ollivander in Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, um, is it John Hurt? Is that his name? That sounds right. Yeah, but he he was incredible in Night Crossing. He really was. He really made that movie sparkle. So it, there's it, a lot of good acting, and I mean, it's. It's interesting because one thing that I'm kind of realizing as we watch more of these movies is, like, Disney is kind of an incredible company. Like, some of these movies they've made are, like, other than the animated stuff, like, the live-action ones, like, they're good movies, even if they're terrible. Well, like, I mean, they pay for it. They pay for people. Some of the movies are just god-awful. But they're so good fun. good people. Yeah. And some of them... I mean, to me, the... But the thing I guess that's also most surprising is the animated movies when they're bad are harmfully bad. Like yeah. it's it's terrible. Like Return to Neverland really hurt me as a person. <laughs> well, I thought more than planes. <laughs> well, see planes too. I mean yeah, it's, it's both they're both animated. It's bad. They're just god awful. Like as bad as Santa Claus or Shaggy Dog is. It's worse. 
It's just like the when the animated movies are bad, it's really bad. Well, and yeah, no, I, I would I would agree with that. And I would have never guessed that. It's yeah, and that it's it really just comes down to that the live action ones like when they're you know quote bad they're charming and they're like you can find something to like laugh about. And... I can't wait till we find one that's just really bad. <laughs> I mean, the monkey's uncle was pretty bad, David. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. but we still the monkey's found... uncle actually was really bad. But we still found it enjoyable. It was still funny. No, you know what? It really wasn't. It's really bad. It's yeah, it's bad. Like that's the point. Oh, but that was too. Oh, oh. Yeah. No, it's um. Oh, yeah. No, there's the def... best thing about that stupid movie was the Beach Boys song at the beginning. Yeah. No, I know. Believe me, I know. Which thankfully you've been off that train for a while, but. Yeah. It finally left me. <laughs> It'll probably make a comeback. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to contribute no, to I our think, recap? I think I think we have more than recapped these thirty. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. 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 But all right, cool. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Yeah. And follow, we... follow, follow. You know what to do. We'll give our spiel in the regular episode. Yeah. You know, at the Disney movies with the hearts. What? Nothing. <laughs> We're going to do the outro. Oh, well, I'm David. <laughs> I'm Kelly. And this has been at the Disney Movies of the Hearts. Bye! Bye. Welcome to At the Disney Movies recap episode. <laughs> Is it not with the hearts? Or did we? <laughs>